In this video, I will teach you how to become a pro in Minecraft. You've all seen those videos where YouTubers say they're a pro or try to teach you how to become one, when in reality, they aren't even one themselves. This is different. This video will actually help you, so I hope you enjoy. Disclaimer, not everyone will be able to reach the level of professional. It is not for everybody. But if you want to get significantly better at Minecraft, stick around. I'll show you how. Everyone, no matter who they are, can improve on their skills. This includes people like Dream, Techno, and Shadow Mage. Hey, wait, that's me! Yes, that's right. No one is perfect, not even close. So at whatever skill level you are currently at, you can still improve. So, starting things off with a very, very important one. Pushing yourself to your limits. What, what does that even have to do with this? This means that every time you play Minecraft, push yourself to get better. Instead of just casually playing and messing around. It's the same thing you do in sports. One hour of intense workouts and pushing to exhaustion is a whole lot better than, say, four hours of messing around. Trust me, it is a complete game changer. This is one of the most important things you need in order to get better. If all you want to do is casually play and build houses and stuff, I'm, I'm all for that. That's amazing. But maybe this video isn't for you. Another extremely important aspect of becoming a pro is hotkeys. The vast majority of players would rather use scroll instead of hotkeys because it's simply easier. But trust me when I say that knowing your hotkeys will save you again and again and again. And it will cut down time on projects significantly. Seriously, do not shrug this off. I used to be there once too. I used to think hotkeys wasn't really important and that I could get by by using scroll. But here's the thing, hotkeys are one of the most important things you need to learn in order to get better. So don't shrug it off and say you can get by without using them because they are extremely useful. It will take some time to master them, but it is completely worth it. I'm willing to bet that within, say, two weeks, you'll get significantly better and see a lot of improvement in your overall gameplay just from using hotkeys. Movement. Compare this to this. Which one is better? Obviously this one. Why? Because of movement. Get better at accuracy with your weapons, and get better at moving as a whole. Dodging attacks, making quick movements with your player, and even fast movements with your cursor can save you from almost certain death. This is also a big part of pushing yourself. If you feel as though you are starting to relax and slow down and kind of go into the more casual playing, sit straight and over-exaggerate your movement so you can get back into the swing of things. Advance swiftly. Advance through the game as fast as possible. By the end of your first night, you should already have iron armor and tools. Play as though you are speedrunning for at least the first few nights of your Minecraft world. This will force you to be able to think on your feet and play fast. Practice, practice, practice. This one is key. This is probably the most important thing on this entire list. I guarantee you, you will not become a pro overnight. It will take time. Continue to push yourself and practice as much as you can. With these five aspects added to your game, everything else will be so much easier. Trust me, these were the things that caused me to be able to get quite a bit better at Minecraft. Yeah, so once you have these down, all the other tricks and gameplay will fall into place. So if you are just beginning, use these five things to get better. In no particular order of significance, Inventory management. Being able to organize your inventory well with hotkey setup will help save you tons of time because if you didn't know, almost 50% of the average person's time playing Minecraft is spent in their inventory. So keeping it organized is extremely important. Water clutching. Yes, yes, you already know that pros do this, but do you know how to do it consistently? First off, do not spam click to land the MLG. It is way more effective to simply time the placement and click once or twice. Secondly, you need as much time as possible to land the MLG. The more focus you have on something, the better you will be at successfully completing it. So look down at the ground as fast as possible. As soon as you start to fall, look at your feet, and you will be more consistent at landing unexpected MLGs. Now that you've practiced and gotten better at water MLGs, which are the easiest and most consistent MLGs to do, you need to at least know how to clutch with the other things. 
like boats or berry bushes or hay blocks. You won't always have water with you, so be prepared to save yourself with other items. Knowing your recipes. If you simply take the time to learn every recipe, it will take you a lot of time from looking up recipes online, which in turn will give you a lot more time to master other things. Speed running. Let's be honest, people who can speedrun the game well are almost always categorized as being great at the game. I'm not saying you have to speedrun all the time, trying to get the leaderboard spot or anything like that. I'm just saying that you need to know all the aspects of speedrunning, like routing the four different bastions or triangulating the Eye of Ender to the portal. This will help you prove to your friends that you are good at the game as well. In today's time, that is pretty much a given that you should be able to know that if you are good at the game. There is almost no excuse not to. But also, being able to one cycle the dragon with five or less beds really does give you some extra reputation points. Adding on to that, being able to kill the wither without the need of the best possible gear will make you seem very competent at what you are doing. Yes, yes, it takes zero skill to kill the wither like this. If you really want to prove to your friends that you're good at the game, kill it in the wide open. It's actually a lot more difficult to do so. In fact, being overprepared for the bosses in Minecraft actually kind of diminishes your status. This doesn't mean you can't fight them with Prop 4 Netherite and a stack of golden apples, but from an outside source looking in, it may look like you aren't very confident in your abilities, which in turn kind of does diminish your status, like I already said. So you don't look confident in your abilities when you prepare for so long to fight a Minecraft boss instead of being able to beat it without having to have the best possible stuff. Okay, the point that I'm getting at is to be prepared to fight anything without having to have all the necessities. This will help you adapt to your environment better, thus giving you experience and quick thinking. PvP. Practicing your PvP skills is a great way to get better as a whole. Most people who are considered a pro are great at PvP. I mean, come on, that's that's completely obvious. I mean, Technoblade and Dream might be the first that come to your mind. Or maybe you're an OG player and remember the likes of Dante. PvP is pretty easy to learn, but hard to master. Yeah, you can get significantly better once you know the basics, but to master it is very difficult. There really isn't a fast solution for this. It does take quite some time to master, and I'm not going to teach you how to master PvP because it is too big of a subject to add to this video. We'd be here for a long time. So I'd recommend looking up tutorials on how to get better. That brings up another great aspect you can utilize to get way better. The internet. In any one of these aspects, you can look up other players who can teach you how to get better at something by simply just watching their videos. You're here watching this video, so either you want to get better on Minecraft or you are a true legend and tune in to watch my high quality videos. Seriously, all of you who watch me on a regular basis, thank you so much. I seriously appreciate you guys. And I'm not just saying that. You guys mean so much to me. So utilize all your tools, such as the internet and other good players around you. Okay, so you know what PvP is, but do you know PvE? Player versus entities? Simply being able to know how to beat every mob in Minecraft will help you tons in the long run. And come on, for most of Minecraft's mobs, all you have to do is just left click. But there are a select few you need to know how to combat them, such as the Enderman. Which the answer is literally just boats, so um... Yeah. Okay, now that your attention has gone elsewhere, let's have a speed round. Speed bridging. Every good player should be able to speed bridge, otherwise you look like a fool. Block clutches. These will save you from certain death all the time, and you look great doing it. Beacons. Having multiple beacons implies that you are dedicated and competent at the game. Clicking really fast. In the newer versions, it's mainly placing blocks. Surviving tough situations makes you look like a pro. Advancing through the game quickly, such as full diamond in just a short time of playing. Accuracy with the bow and other projectiles. Critical hits, knowing how to find diamonds easily, like using this lapis trick, which gives you diamonds most of the time, simply by mining four blocks in the negative Z direction, north, and mining down from there. Or the clay trick, which is the same, but usually eight blocks instead of four. Now there are in-depth videos on this subject, and they explain how it all works, so I'd recommend go checking out those to get the full gist of the story. With these tricks, you can find a ton of diamonds super easily and super efficiently. To be a true pro at Minecraft, you have to be at least decent in most areas of the game meaning at least basic redstone and decent at building. 
Now, don't go down there and say that great builders like Grian or redstone engineers like Ilmango or Mumbo aren't professionals, because they are, but in a specific area. I'm kind of aiming towards everything, and yes, I am definitely being biased towards a competitive playing style like Dream or Techno. That is because we more generally associate pros with them. I mean, let's be honest. You are not going to see a redstone contraption or great house and say, wow, that player is a pro, unless it is like a mega base or something. You'd say something like, wow, this person's smart, or wow, this person's creative, but it never really comes up as pro. This is why I'm categorizing pros with a competitive playing style. If you came here to get better at redstone, this isn't really the video for you. Search up tutorials and things like that because those will definitely help with that. With that said, utilizing secret bases will give you more reputation points as well. I mean, come on, they're, they're just cool. And it does make you look like a better player if you have a cool base and if you know your way around redstone. It's just not the most important aspect of becoming a pro. Knowing how to build farms like mob grinders or creeper farms definitely let other players know what you are capable of. And on top of that, it gives you an added bonus of getting tons of materials that you can use for anything. Being good at parkour is seriously useful when playing in a fast placed manner. Fast placed? It'll save you lots of time and it is just something you do all the time. Trust me, it is actually pretty useful, but don't feel like you have to download a bunch of parkour maps in order to just get better. I used to play a lot of those maps back in the day, but I actually learned a lot more when I was just playing around with it in survival. When I was mastering other aspects such as movement, and hotkeying that actually helped with parkour in fact movement was the main thing once i realized that being able to move quickly is useful then my parkour ability skyrocketed and now without playing a parkour map in years i could probably steamroll it okay i'm getting too overconfident but still you get my point like mastering the core aspects will improve your other abilities as well so now with the things that are less thought of and arguably more difficult aspects to becoming a pro studying the game. Ugh, study. Ugh, don't remind me. I don't want to go to school. Yeah, yeah, hear me out. Studying the game does mean like recipes, like learning the recipes and stuff like that. But it also means to be on the lookout for like small glitches that will help you in certain specific instances. And I they don't have to be glitches. I'm just saying like small useful features that will help you in very specific instances and just being able to accumulate a lot of those will help your overall playing style quite a lot. Because once you have a lot of those and you're playing with your friends and stuff and just being able to show them these small little features that they didn't know about really makes you look like you're super knowledgeable at the game. But studying the game also means knowing the game inside and out. Like I said before, know how to make every recipe know how to be or use any mob in minecraft be innovative look for things that you can use to your advantage that not a lot of people know for example the lapis trick to my surprise not a lot of people know about it right now yes more and more people are catching on but as a whole this is difficult and don't think it will come to you that fast because minecraft is the most popular game in history and discovering things that not a lot of people know is hard i know i've already said this before but play fast play as though you are in a manhunt or something Play as if something is hunting you down. Play as if NASCARs are bubbling your stock exchange. What? All right, all right. I was just making sure that you were still paying attention. Always prepare for the worst when going up against someone or something that will put your skills to the test. Now, if the Ender Dragon does that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with stacking up and facing it with everything you got. Just know that killing the Ender Dragon really isn't that hard to pro players. So if you are struggling, practice some more and get better. Practice so that you don't have to have full prop 4 netherite to beat the dragon. Practice in a way where you could beat the dragon, say, with just iron armor. That's not too difficult. Always be aware of your surroundings. Pros are always aware of their surroundings. One unseen creeper later, and you could look like a huge noob. Also, one overpowered annoying baby zombie later, and your five-year hardcore world is gone. Set ambitious goals. What? What does this have to do with 
being a pro? Well, as pro players, we can really lose motivation on things if we don't have a direction. So setting ambitious goals keeps you striving to accomplish it. This doesn't mean that you have to build a huge mega base that'll take 500 hours to complete. It just means setting goals that are out of your comfort zone. Once you accomplish those goals, set a new one. Wadzi is actually a great example of this. He's constantly thinking of weird things to do in his world and it just keeps him motivated. Be paranoid. Okay, that sounds weird, but hear me out. Say you are walking in your base and you feel like something is off. You just can't quite put your finger on it. Then you shrug it off, and one step later, you're on a tripwire, and then... You die. This is an example of not being paranoid. Assume everything is a trap if you are on an SMP or a multiplayer server. If not, then this is just extra work on top of everything else, so it really isn't that important if you're just playing by yourself. But if your friend manages to prank you really hard, it really does diminish your status a little bit, but still, I mean, you can't be on your guard all the time. I mean, come on, that's that makes it unfun. When you're always going hard as, as much as possible, it makes the game less interesting. So like, I get it. I get it. You're not going to be aware of things like that 24-7. Nobody's going to play like that. But just being observant helps quite a bit. Also, having a photographic memory helps too, but at the same time, what your options? I mean, come on, come on. You can develop one, can't you? What am I saying? And finally, for the final last end product of all of this, reach a higher plane of existence. Once you become a pro, you will see the entire universe in ways you never thought possible. No, 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 no. No, that was a joke. At number 39, the last piece of advice I can give you is have fun. Have fun in the process of doing all of this. Take time and enjoy the memories you make along the way. These will stay with you and you will miss the simple times when you didn't know how to do everything. Having fun is very important because Minecraft is in fact a game if you didn't already know. That is the point. And having fun gives you motivation as well, so it is practical. So now you are probably thinking to yourself, okay, okay, I just spent the last 15 minutes of my life looking up on how to become a pro in Minecraft. And I've made it this far in the video, but I just don't know how to put it all together. I just don't know where to start. Or you may be thinking, I know what I need to do, but I just don't know how. Well, if you don't know how, look up tutorials on how to do it. I know, I know, I know, that is the cheap way out. But seriously, getting tutorials on how to do something is probably the best way you'll learn. I mean, come on, most of you watching this video are probably doing that. And remember to practice and practice and practice again and again. Keep on trying. Don't give up. If you don't know which ones you should really focus on or where to start, well then, sucks to be you, I guess. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. So, so here's my answer. Push yourself every time you play in order to get better. No matter what area you are working on, if you don't push yourself, you won't get better. Practice. Practice on whatever you are doing. Give yourself enough time to get better. Movement and hotkeys. These are the foundation, the cornerstones to everything else. Once you have movement and hotkeys down, nearly everything else falls into place. Study the game. Know it inside and out. Advance quickly and play fast. This goes along with movement, hotkeys, and studying the game. Get those things down, and you will be able to advance through the game quickly, as needed. Preventing death. So, MLGs, block clutches, and knowing your surroundings. And lastly, having fun slash being motivated. All the others will be much easier once you master these things. Trust me. So, pushing yourself. Practice. Movement, hotkeys, studying the game, advancing quickly, playing fast, and preventing death. With that said, I hope you learned something new in this video. And if you did, hit that subscribe button. Anyways, goodbye.